So many of you are probably in the situation where you found a part you think has savings, but now what? Now what? Or you've designed a part and the quotes are coming back very different than you expected and you don't know why. Industry leaders recognize that there is a limit to the amount of savings that can be achieved by beating suppliers up on price alone. As this opening from a McKinsey article posted in July 2020 shows, companies unlock more savings if they find ways to unlock new sources of value that benefit both buyer and supplier. But finding those mutually beneficial savings is much easier said than done. Suppliers and commodity managers are busier than ever managing chip shortages, bottlenecks getting parts shipped, rising material rates, and suppliers don't have time to wade through all of the parts that you purchase that you purchase from them and come up with Kaizen projects for you. So how can a priori help you and the supplier unlock these mutually beneficial savings faster? The way we can is by providing data. Data makes the difference between a traditional negotiation and a cost collaboration. In a traditional negotiation, the buyer doesn't know the right questions to ask, to uncover where the cost drivers are, and they have no benchmarks to vet any information they do uncover. And I don't just mean a benchmark on the overall piece part price, I mean benchmarks for all the parameters that make up the cost of a part. Labor rate, material utilization, cycle time, etc. Without rich data to select which parts actually have savings potential, you could be wasting both you and the supplier's time by negotiating a part that's already right priced. And finally, if you have no data to negotiate, then the supplier is negotiating from a stronger position because they have all of the information. When the customer has data at their fingertips, they know which questions to ask the supplier um, and can determine if their responses are fair and reasonable for them both. Through this collaborative process, the buyer can learn about the supplier capabilities and incorporate that information into future estimates and future discussions will be faster. Learning about your supplier's capabilities also allows you to have them quote the parts they're best suited for in the first place. I'm sure any suppliers on the line can attest to how frustrating it is to receive RFQs you're not well suited for and then be told that your pricing is competitive. So here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to use the data in cost discussions. First, You've got the a priori estimate, and we encourage you to use it to understand the cost drivers of your parts. You have to see where a priori is saying the cost drivers are. Is it mostly material cost? Is it mostly in labor cost? If you go into the discussion knowing most of the cost is in material, and the supplier mentions that they have high labor rates, then you know that shouldn't impact the cost too much. You can also familiarize yourself with the rates the model is using, and even tweak the values ahead of time to get a target cost range that you're comfortable with. For example, check how the cost changes if you double the cycle time or double the labor rate. And that way you're equipped to address supplier questions. You can also contact the supplier ahead of time to check if the routing that a priori picked matches how they're actually making it. We recommend that you let the supplier know that you're trying to understand the cost drivers of this part and why. Is there pressure from your customers to reduce cost? Will volumes go up if you can get cost out? Make the goal of getting cost out compelling for the supplier so they are a partner in the effort to reduce cost and then request a cost breakdown from the supplier. Compare the supplier's cost breakdown to the a priori breakdown. Look for where the biggest differences are. Then when you find the differences, use the five whys technique of root cause analysis to get to the root cause of the difference in cost. And that's where the mutual savings can lie. For example, you may uncover the supplier labor cost per part is higher than your a priori estimate. And so you ask, your labor cost is different. Why? What labor time are you quoting? What tasks are adding most of the time? What's the labor rate? You can compare all of these data points to what's in a priori and uncover the true root cause of the difference in cost. I had a supplier whose labor cost was high because they were manually masking off parts when they did conformal coding, but we were assuming they were using masks, uh, reusable masks. And so we split the cost of reusable masks and we reduced their labor costs for future, future builds. It's a cost savings for us both. As the supplier provides answers to your five whys, you have to decide if what you think they're doing is fair and reasonable. 
If you do, then update the model to account for it. For example, you've costed the part in a priori USA, but the supplier is located in Massachusetts, so they say the labor rate is higher. Update the labor rate and recost it to see if that closes the gap between their cost and the a priori estimate. If it does not, then you have more investigation to do. If it does, then you've improved your model. Finally, keep in mind that you may uncover something that you as the buyer need to do differently. For example, I worked with a supplier who said, our machining time is longer than your estimate. Um, the longest step in the machining is keeping this height tolerance on the part. If you could relax that, then we could reduce the time. And I knew that part had to fit into a housing. and It was tight width-wise, but not height-wise. So the engineer agreed to relax the tolerance.